it's hard to find clothes that actually fit somebody who's into raw foods or that's actually fit. Right, right, right. Or like a healthy weight, not like overweight. So they make all these baggy ass clothes and I hate wearing baggy ass clothes, right? So Target has these athletic fit. My size is a small, so small athletic fit that actually looks nice. It's not too baggy. So I, I get my shirts at Target. Hopefully they didn't change their their cut on their athletic small shirts. So that's why I wear this style. Uh, but it gives you a youthful boyish look. Well, that, that too. Yeah, there's a purpose. <laughs> hey everyone, We're back again with John Kohler for more talking. We're in his yard, <laughs> his backyard. It's a jungle here. It's so cool hanging out here. This guy grows what he eats in his backyard and it's just so beautiful relaxing and quiet nature like here <laughs> so welcome john oh thanks for having me marcus well actually i'm saying welcome to this is your place <laughs> anyway um yeah i want to talk some more about all kinds of stuff you're you're uh you're mainly raw food plant-based uh non-dairy i mean you don't cook your food no i don't cook any food there are exceptions though there's select things like you know heated mushroom powders that are organic i right, eat because yeah. mushrooms are quite beneficial right. you know i have right. natto which is like cooked beans but then they're fermented so they're a live food because right, they have right. enzymes so just small things like that but you mainly know. you eat this stuff you but yeah i eat fruits and vegetables is my diet i don't yeah. think i've I don't, today I only ate fruits and vegetables today. I haven't even eaten any fats yet, really. That's actually a good lead into our question here. Our, 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 our topic today is, um, and we talked about this in the last video a little bit, we touched on it, but um, most, a lot of raw foodists look shriveled up. They look like raisins, <laughs> they're all wrinkly, they don't look too healthy. They're, and you look like all plump and smooth and young and everything you got your hair and your teeth still so <laughs> yeah. um, and you're at that age where you don't want to talk about your age anymore so <laughs> <laughs> the, the ongoing mystery but uh so what what is it that is that makes you have your smooth boyish skin and everything else that's a good question so my skin marcus is, is due to a lot of reasons you know it's not any one particular reason People might say, John's lucky because he's half Asian. So he has Asian genes or, you know, I made a video yeah, with, yeah. Uh, you know, people and black don't crack and people like want to blame it on my genetics, heredity or yeah, genetics yeah. of yeah. other people's or whatever. And while genetics have a part to play and, you know, hey, my genes are my genes and I'm glad to have them. You look part Indian. No, well, yeah, see, I could pass for a lot of things. It's kind of cool <laughs> if I'm in, like, Mexico, I pass for Mexican, if I pass for I, I can't whatever say things. I can Native American. All right, right yeah. yeah, so anyways, but I'm half Asian, but, you know, that I think helps a little bit, but my brother, who's actually younger than me, you know, he has wrinkles, and he's showing his age. So what's the difference? Not. Well, you know, my brother's on a standard American diet, hopefully eats more fruits and vegetables. I mean, I would wish he eats certain things, but he doesn't. And so it, time has caught up to him. And actually, think, think about this, Mark. This is crazy. Like, most people don't know this about me. But when I was a child, right, in grade school, I would get teased as a child for having really bad skin on my face. Like acne or? No, no, I didn't have acne, I had dry skin. So people would call me literally lizard skin, Marcus. Okay. Like this really affects Did the child. Did you eat different back then? Oh yeah, I just ate a standard American oh, diet okay, when I was okay, in grade okay. school, you know? Yeah, so okay. like, you know, I was born even with bad genes on some levels because yeah. in my mom's side of the family, skin conditions run rampant, you know? Mm -hmm. Ichthyosis and eczema are two things that I actually was diagnosed with as a child that, you know, I pretty much have, I don't want to say grown out of because it wasn't just growing out of them. I actually had to make dietary changes to get rid of those things right. that were problems because of maybe bad genes and right. improper diet eating. And when you eat a proper diet, then, you know, your genes can be fully expressed and, and fully realized and you could have good looking skin. So, you know, if you're one of those people that actually teased me as a child about bad skin, I'm laughing at you now because <laughs> check this out and you guys are probably all wrinkled because you're doing the exact things that cause you guys to have the wrinkled skin. So I don't do this to be vain. I don't do my dad to be vain. Actually, I do it for my health, Marcus, because as you know, I almost lost my life when I was younger yeah. and I had to get really serious about eating healthy so that I don't get sick again. And that's been my entire motivation. You know, my skin being nice, that's just a side benefit. I'm grateful for that. And I'm happy that that's you know occurred but here's the thing you are what you eat and what you look like on the inside is what you look like on the outside right. so you know my specific diet and what I do is has caused caused me to have to get what I've gotten so you started your life with milk sugar bread the typical 
Yeah. Ameria. Yeah. Me too. I mean, my, too, my parents yeah. didn't really, we, we shopped, my parents, you know, shopped at the co-op back in Berkeley, back in the, you know, back in the day, I won't say the yeah. year. But, um, and we didn't really have the really sweet sugary foods. My parents also didn't let us have like, you know, sugary Cokes and drinks, but we had milk and, you know, we would pour extra sh sugar on our cereal because our parents right. would only let us get granola <laughs> and cornflakes and they yeah. wouldn't get, let us get Lucky Charms and things like that. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, regular stuff. And, you know, I probably should have eaten more fruits and vegetables back so then. So you eat mainly what's growing here. This is mainly your food. Well, so I eat what's growing here, plus I have to I supplement and buy additional food as well. Like, so I'm not going to say. I mean, I buy a lot of fruits, so, you know, fruits are a good part of my diet. Plants. Yeah, I buy plant foods. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I eat plants. I don't eat, like, do I grow? Is everything here only what I eat? Is this, you know, all of what I eat? No. One day when I have some acreage, I will grow 99% of what I eat on my land. At present time, I grow the majority of my vegetables. I rarely have to buy vegetables. There are certain exclusions that I don't actually grow because it's just not cost effective. Or, like, they won't grow right now in the summertime in Las Vegas in 110, 100 degree weather. Yeah, by the way, guys, it, it's like 100 and something yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, about 100 today. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not, so uh, but your skin is all plump looking. So people are gonna say, do you eat a lot of fats? Oils, fats, avocados, nuts, seeds, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, so Marcus, I want to- Butter. Yeah, <laughs> no butter, all right, no butter. Coconut Except oil. coconut butter, actually. Okay. I eat coconut butter, rarely, actually. Um, but on fats, actually, you know, I try to eat appropriate amount of fat for me. Everybody's a bit different. You know, I've seen people on a low fat raw vegan diet, you know, they generally, don't have the best skin from what I've seen from past experience. So, you know, I don't, I don't try to do an ultra low fat diet. There have been points that I have, but nowadays I like to keep, keep it in a range and I don't like to like, I don't ever check my percentages, but basically I have usually fats in the evening and maybe actually sometimes during the day, like today I made coconut milk, cactus fruit juice. So I like ran some coconut meat through the juicer to kind of extract some fats with the high antioxidant cactus fruits. So I get a better uptake. Right. And, and then, but normally I would only eat fats usually in, the, in my evening meal because it tends to slow me down a little bit yeah. and calm me down and then I'm ready for bed. So I might have a handful or two of nuts you know, some days I might have an avocado or two, and every day is a bit different. If I'm traveling, I might eat actually less fats and, you know, a bit more, but I try to keep my fats around in a range. You know, I don't like to have precise numbers. I'd say between 15% yeah, but, and like 25% would be my optimal fat percentage of calories range. Your cells, every cell wall is a lipid that's fat. Right. Oh, and then the type of fats too is a whole nother topic. You know, I, one of the things I do eat every day when I'm not traveling is flax seeds. So I try to get, you know, like a teaspoon of flax seeds in with every, every, every meal. So, I mean, I might be adding a handful of macadamia nuts, but then also put a tablespoon or two of flax seeds. I don't really measure anymore. I just dump whatever comes out of right, the jar. Right, right, right. So seeds, nuts. Uh, durian's got a lot of... Uh yeah, I eat, I eat some durian sometimes, but it's actually kind of uh, expensive. So generally, I like actually plant-based fats. So aside from nuts and seeds, some of the fats I really appreciate and like are coconut. So young coconut meat yeah, or yeah, extracted, um, you know, like coconut milk from the mature coconuts. Or then I will do um, avocados, of course. Yeah, and then yeah. the other one I really like a lot is olives. Yeah, so I'll eat right. like, you know, soaked olives that have been soaked in RO water because they come so salty. And salt is another thing that, in my opinion, it's like salt is good, but it's bad, right? We need the proper amount of sodium. And more importantly than the amount of sodium you're getting is your sodium potassium balance because every yeah. cell has a sodium potassium pump that pumps things in and out right. for fluid exchange. And if you have too much sodium, not enough potassium, right. then your cells are not working properly. Then you're going to not look good either, you know, right, aside right. from you just not being healthy. Right, right. So you said you had some secret mystery uh, two things you wanted to show as your the main things that make you look so oh, good. Oh yeah, man, so check this out. These are two things <laughs> that he uses to look good. That I use to look good. <laughs> Olive oil and, and sugar, sugar, but yet, actually I rarely eat any oils. So yeah, I, I actually don't eat this oil, nor do I eat sugar. Sugar will age you more prematurely and yeah. faster than anything else, except maybe fried foods or foods heated at hot temperatures cross. that basically cross, causes Link. cross linking, causes AGEs, yeah. causes you to age more quickly. So it's not about what I do, 
It's also about what I don't do. I don't smoke. If, you, if you've seen a smoker, they have wrinkly faces, man. That's because that's aging their face prematurely fast, right? You see the faces of meth. You could just Google faces of meth. And people that are on meth, that ages them so fast. I don't do drugs, right? Drugs will age you so fast. Yeah. They tax your liver. They do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? I don't eat fried foods. I don't eat, you know, foods cooked at high temperatures for a sustained period of time that cause the browning, the mallard effect that will age you fast, right? I, I haven't eaten any of those things for like 23 years now. So it's, it's more than just what I do, it's what I don't no do. Better. That most people, are, it's just common. You eat, you go out and have potato chips or you have yeah. french fries. I mean, people do all this stuff all the time. Cooked food turns into, into sugar in your system. Bread, all that, all the wheat products, yeah. that's the, and so people are addicted to wheat. Like anything made, like baked, baked in an oven. Yeah, I, I don't bake. My oven's disconnected. I don't use it. Actually, one of the reasons why my girlfriend moved out is because she couldn't cook any food here. She's so happy to actually have a, a stove in her new place. So what do you do with this? Oh, yeah, yeah. So sugar. So do not eat sugar. <laughs> Extracted sugar will prematurely age you really fast. And olive oil. Well, I don't eat this stuff. How I use this, Marcus, is actually because aside from what I'm not eating and what I am eating, right, and I eat high antioxidant plant foods, and I, I even have more specifics, but um, what I also do is I take care of my skin. Girls do this every day. It's really, really weird for guys to do this, and I'm coming out in a video. I'm coming out. <laughs> I take care of my skin because the skin is the most important organ of your body, whether I'm doing skin brushing to help, you know, let things flow in and out of my skin or whether I'm doing exfoliation. So actually this is my exfoliation recipe. Do not eat this stuff, but I will put this all over my body and so how do you do it? my girlfriend too. How, how do you do it? So basically one to one ratio, super simple. I get a tub, I mix these two olive oil. Sometimes I use coconut oil um, when it's hot out, but coconut oil doesn't work good in the winter time when it's too cold because right. it gets too hard. But I'll mix one to one, it's raw, raw brown sugar turbinado <laughs> and this is the one that works good because if you get the smaller crystals they don't really have a good scrubbing. like scrubbing effect yeah, yeah. i mean if you're a girl you might want to get the softer stuff i'm a guy and i'm just like scraping this stuff on <laughs> my face scrape it all over my body rub it in while i'm in the shower so and you just wash it right off yeah, yeah i mean it's kind of like sandpaper so yeah. you know i i have a more dry skin condition that people would probably never think by looking at me um so i exfoliate like Every time I take a shower, I'm exfoliating with these two guys. Awesome. Every night. Awesome. And then it doesn't even end there. Aside from exfoliating, right? Even before you even exfoliate, you gotta get a shower filter, right? You're dousing yourself every time with chlorinated water, chloramine, other toxins in your water that will make your hair dry and brittle, not so healthy, and also cause your skin to age prematurely. The chlorine in there, it's, it's meant in there to kill the bacteria. Right, and it kills you, in my opinion, too. And yeah. so you guys know, hopefully, not to drink chlorinated water, but we also need to use a filter, um, you know, to filter that stuff out. And then, if you want to even get deeper, Marcus, because this goes crazy. I spend nights and nights researching all these different things. Right, one night I was researching like it's called micro water from Japan. So over in Japan, I think. A lot of people in Japan and things that come out of Japan, I think normally it's pretty smart and they got some intelligence people over there doing some cool stuff. Anyways, there's these researchers that researched micro water. And what micro water is, basically have a special shower head that actually basically injects micro bubbles into the water. And then they say that because it's the micro bubbles are in there, it helps penetrate and clean your pores better. So, I mean, I, I don't know if this works, but I, I bought one, and if that's one of the... I mean, see, it's not any one thing. Oh, I got a shower filter. My skin didn't get better. Yeah. No, you got to do all these things, right, right? right? And then even above that, right, I get kind of crazy on this stuff. <laughs> we got this probiotic soap from Japan. This is called the <laughs> Dr. Ahura's probiotic... Kampu Beauty Bar. I mean, this is meant for your skin for, for like women. I'm a guy, I use it. Okay. This stuff's kind of expensive. I mean, it's like, well, I don't know, depending on where you get it, maybe like eight to 10 bucks a bar, <laughs> but I'm worth it, right? right and it's right. like, no, not toxic in there. You know, I'm not using like Dove or none of this right. crap, you know? And then even, even further, right? Cause this is going deep. <laughs> we got, I use these things. Like if you're a girl, you're like, John, why are you using those makeup deep exfoliating puffs, right? Things like. This is what I use, man, like every day in the morning. My night routine is exfoliating with that stuff. My morning routine is using the Wonder Puffs. One side is uh, more abrasive and one side softer. So if you're a girl, you've got soft skin, you're gonna wanna use the soft side. I'm a, I'm a guy, so I usually scrub down hard first and then use a soft side just to buff out some of the more sensitive areas of my skin. Who'd ever guess that you, manly man, yeah. in the garden with your plaid shirt does <laughs> Wonder Puffs in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the first video that I've ever had. Okay, I'm sharing I love it. my. I, love it. I mean, because 
there's a method to my madness, yeah. right? I do all these things because I have to, you know, look good for the camera yeah. on videos, and I want to look yeah. good. And right. I mean, I'm single, so I have to hopefully be able to attract a nice single woman I'm that could have kids, you know, with me one of these days, and and the kids could share some of my good genes. Yeah. Drink <laughs> a lot of water. Yo, yeah. So the other thing is stay hydrated, right? And so staying hydrated is super critical, especially after I moved here to Las Vegas, where this is an arid climate. For those of you guys that haven't been here, and you need to literally. Uh, drink twice as many fluids as you normally would. What about the people that say they only only drink uh, juice instead of water because that's it's more pure, it's got more... So actually I was gonna say that, so you know one of the things actually I try not to drink, although I will if I'm dehydrated, I'm traveling, I really don't like to drink water. Especially the water here in Vegas, because like, they it, it's it's full of like I mean besides the chlorine and the fluoride, which will kind of make you dumb yeah, in my opinion, water, yeah. you know filtered water. Yeah. Um, besides that though, it also has uh, you know uh, minerals. minerals and yeah, too many minerals, minerals oh, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Also probably contaminants yeah, and things right, from right. MTBE. But there's 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 minerals in there which people think are good, but those are the wrong kind of minerals. We want the minerals from the plants. The minerals from the plants take the improper minerals, basically convert them to a form that our bodies could could get. So, you know, I like to drink coconut water or juices. You know, here I have my juice, actually. I'm gonna, you want a juice? Sure. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I'm thirsty right now, but I mean, this is how I stay hydrated. I drink massive quantities of juice. Is this pomegranate? Mm-mm. Raspberry? No, it's beet. Uh, today's juice is uh, beet, carrot, uh, celery, cucumber, ginger, and a little bit of pineapple. Tastes great. Yeah. Nice color. So this is, yeah, I mean, I stay hydrated by uh, drinking fresh juices and uh, things like coconut water predominantly. You know, I used to do like celery, um, cucumber ju juice in the morning. Now I'm just doing straight celery. First couple, like maybe the first week, every time I drink straight celery, I'd get a head rush. I'm like, whoa, I'm high. But now it's just like normal. Some celery tastes really nasty. If it's like old, especially if it's, if it's not as old, it tastes kind of all right. So I'll drink lots of juices in the day. Uh, generally anywhere is between 32 to like 80 ounces maybe sometimes 96 ounces and aside from just the juices that i drink marcus i'm also getting my hydration from the foods i'm eating right very important you know i'm not cooking my foods i'm not cooking the water out of my foods i'm eating water rich foods Moist, fruits and vegetables yeah. you know watermelon it's mostly juicy, water yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. juicy fruits you know i eat lots of berries which is a whole nother topic which you know i don't just eat a raw foods diet i eat a nutrient dense or nutritarian right. Right. raw foods diet because you could have a raw foods diet you could eat nothing but bananas and dates and romaine lettuce all, all day stuff. and like yeah. that's in my opinion not so healthy because you're really limited you're not eating you know antioxidant rich foods that you know have the vitamins and the minerals you know one of the things I really love like you saw like I grow a lot of peppers not only because they grow well in here in Vegas but because they're probably my favorite non-sweet fruit out there you know they are high in vitamin C oh, yeah. and I mean that's a that's a that's a tip right there vitamin C and other antioxidants in the foods will have you cause you to have nice skin why because it's all about the collagen no I don't take collagen supplements our bodies could make collagen right, but that shuts sense. down if you're not getting vitamin C and vitamin C leaves your body fairly quickly yep. especially so, stress and right yeah, oh yeah thyroid it all wipes out your, your vitamin C yeah. so I eat vitamin C on a regular and consistent basis in my life you know maybe I might have some bell peppers or peppers for dinner vitamin c you might have you know a juice yeah. in the morning right. vitamin c i'm right. like vitamin c is constantly being flooded inside me unless i'm sleeping so my body could make the collagen it needs so i could have nice skin and, and be healthy that more importantly you don't have a shortage of energy do you no, 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 man. I got tons of energy. <laughs> well, that's great. Anything else in your list here? Oh, uh, yeah. Lots, long I got a lot of stuff, man. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. This is very important, right? Uh, Jay Cordich, the juice man, who we both attended, you know, his memorial or celebration um, recently. Um, he said, uh, live food, live bodies, dead food, dead right. bodies. I like to say not alive food not alive bodies right, exactly. <laughs> but anyways nonetheless i try to eat vibrant food oh my god that's so important when you cook food it's no longer vibrant you know these plants here that i could probably move over actually these are really nice they're they're, purple on that they're purple on the bottom wow. side this is shiso nice um so they're antioxidant rich and live because before i eat anything out of my garden i don't just pick it and leave it in my fridge i come out okay what am i eating for dinner i just scope out everything okay i'm gonna have some peppers in my dressing i'm gonna have you know this uh um egyptian spinach growing right here i'm gonna have the water spinach which is kind of like my 
lettuce substitute. I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have that. I just pick it all fresh and bring it in. It has the most light. I mean, here's some sprouts, right? Pea shoots, right? This stuff is still growing. I'll cut this and eat it right into me. That's why half it's cut because I ate that the other day. I'll probably eat this tonight, you know? And it's like, we need to eat vibrant foods and people on a raw foods diet could just go down the supermarket, soak some nuts or soak some grains and eat that. Oh yeah, they're raw, but how vibrant are they? Maybe if you're soaking the grains and they start to sprout, but you could get like, you know, bananas that are imported that were picked weeks ago yeah. before they're really ripe. And I mean, and, and food like lettuce in the grocery store is picked a couple weeks ago. Maybe broccoli could be a month old, you know, when you're eating it. The minute you pick something, half the vitamins are gone within the first hour. Yeah, it depends on the vitamin and the nutrient, yeah, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a significant problem that people don't talk about. I mean, the other thing that if I want to get deeper is, you know, I try to eat mineral-rich foods. Yeah. Aside, we talked about sodium-potassium right. balance, right. but right. there's all these other trace minerals mm -hmm. that should be in your food that are unfortunately not due to improper agricultural practices, whether it's conventional, even organic food. You know, most farmers are not concerned about adding trace minerals right. into the soils because, you know, if they do, I mean, their plants might be healthier, it'll have more nutrients, but the problem is it's going to cost them more money and they don't see that the cost, you know, weighs out the benefit, which if they did do it, um, and also what they've been doing all these years works and they don't want to like throw a monkey wrench in and screw anything up because that's right. it's all about money, it's about right. profit. NPK so I, is all they put in this. Right, yeah, so they add three main minerals, maybe yeah. some people, if they're into it, they're up to 16, but I add up to, you know, 70 to 90 different trace minerals in the forms of seawater and yeah, also you know, rock yeah. dust to have more nutrients in my food. And aside from that, like people are thinking, John, do I have to grow food to be healthy? Well, you know, I would encourage you guys always to grow your food. It's always the best. And that's what I've, you know, strive for to grow as much of my food as I eat as possible. But if you can't, that's all right. You could still get minerals from other foods. There's very few foods on the plant that have a lot of minerals, but one of them is seaweed. Seaweed. So as aside yeah. from seaweed being grown in the ocean and you got to be careful, get a good source. Some of the cheap stuff from China, you know, could be really bad. I try to get like, actually, here's a, here's some uh, New Zealand, <laughs> And this is the package anyways, New Zealand um, wakame, you know, and I get like, you know, the tested seaweeds from Japan and Korea that I believe are safer and you can get seaweeds off the coast of California. I have a video harvesting seaweeds. Right. And besides the um, minerals in there, there's also beneficial polysaccharides that are also in things like cactus fruit and aloe vera that I'm cactus growing here, yeah. you know. And you've got purslane. Yeah, I got purslane right there, you know, so awesome. I mean, it's like not any one food. It's just all these different foods that I eat and I try to eat a big variety of foods that are antioxidant rich, um, vibrant, also high water content. That's very important too. many people miss that they could eat dehydrated kale chips and be raw. That's not, I mean, I eat like, I love kale chips, don't get me wrong, but it's like a travel food when I'm traveling yeah, right, and I, right. I can't bring my garden with me so I could dehydrate or now I freeze dry foods to, you know, bring healthy foods with me if I can't get them wherever I'm traveling to. So another thing I do, Marcus, is um, I eat anti-inflammatory foods. So of course, the fruits and vegetables have different antioxidants and vitamins in there that are really good for us. But also, you know, I, I try to stay away from foods that you, a person may be allergic to. You know, so I know what foods maybe might make me more allergic or set me off. So people need to respect that and find out what they are allergic to. And then there's also other foods that just everybody may be allergic to, just if they have foreign animal proteins in them, you know, those may cause a leukocytosis reaction, which may cause inflammation in your body. Mm -hmm. So I try to eat foods that won't cause that. So any animal foods, whether, you know, it's like, uh, you know, meat or uh, eggs or dairy, yeah. all that stuff will cause inflammation in your body. I mean, it will raise your IGF-1, which is cause inflammation, which is, which is then your body having to deal with extra stuff that it doesn't ha normally have to do, whereas I'm eating the exact opposite. I'm eating antioxidant rich foods that are purple, you know, that are, they're going to squelch that so I could be healthier and, I mean, look better too. Right, right. And you're not shriveling up. So the whole, where's your protein kind of thing is, is silly. Yeah, there's plenty of protein in the plants. You just need enough quantity. And of course, I, I try to focus on the green vegetables that have the most protein right. in the plant kingdom. And talking about that is, you know, fruits, for example, right? Fruits, they have some protein in there, not as much as some of the green vegetables, of course. But the other thing I really am, am careful to moderate, especially to not cross-link myself, is to watch the sugar intake, right? Sh yeah, I don't eat processed sugars, nope, but I eat fresh fruits and some dried fruits, right? That have natural occurring sugars, but the thing people don't realize is that when you're eating a fruit, you're not eating extracted white, extracted even turbinado sugar. Yeah, right. You're eating a fruit, it has with lots of water fiber. mostly. With fiber. It has fiber, it sugar. has antioxidants yeah. in there, it has vitamins and minerals, so many different things besides just a small component of sugar. So one of the things I've been doing lately, and when I was a little bit younger, I, I, I found that I could handle sugar a bit more and probably ate more fruits back then. But now as I'm uh, aging gracefully, um, you know, I like to m minimize my fruit consumption. So my goal every day now is to only have one fruit meal a day. Sometimes 
pounds I would normally do two but now I'm only I'm down to one fruit meal a day that's it and then if I want to eat more fruit then I'm like I have un I allow myself or choose to eat unlimited berries so I could have strawberries blueberries because they have relatively low sugar right, right. but also they're also high antioxidants so that's one of my really big focuses is eating high antioxidant foods you know beets and carrots they're high antioxidant foods carrots seem to be one of the cheapest you know foods out there that just I don't know I, I used to stay away from because I was like oh it's sugar but now you know I, I drink carrot juice you know with, mixed with other vegetables all the time so another thing really important to me Marcus is uh, living a stress-free life or just a peaceful life I don't like to even use the word stress-free because that's like the operand word there I like yeah. to just say peaceful life nothing try... ages you faster than stress right yeah, yeah for sure so I try to just create the life I want so I have a pretty much a, you know minimal stress life don't have a lot of issues or problem to deal with I mean that's super important I think I, I totally agree I mean it's just it's almost like these plants are helping absorb that it's so quieter yeah you know and getting good amounts of negative ions and being in nature I yeah. mean have a right. connection with nature is right. so exactly. important I mean I don't really talk about this too much I did have a video on it but you know just coming out to my garden I just feel more relaxed and being inside with artificial lighting and all these yeah, things you know yeah, and just yeah. breathing fresh air going out hiking enjoying right. nature you just loaded off a whole bunch of <laughs> that's almost too much for people to handle I guess but that's good that's true you listed it all oh uh, the one more thing actually before I forget is sun right the sun it, it sun is an absolutely essential nutrient we need it to make vitamin d unless you're supplementing um you know i also i also think this is so good for us but the thing is people either people either love the sun i have friends that I just love, love the, the sun. sun they'll lie out in the sun yeah. all day or i have friends that hate the sun like my friend rest her soul uh novally she would always wear hats and protect her face and all this stuff from any amount of sun i mean i think we need to get the proper amount of sun not too much not too little and for me personally actually i like to get i like to have sun protection so my sun protection is i don't usually use sunblock although my mom always tells me to i probably should i carry some around usually but i i, I really don't like putting things on my skin too, except yeah, one thing yeah. so i like to get internal sun protection exactly so you know i'll eat you know if you want to take an algae there's this thing called anthazanthin yeah. from a uh, red algae that is actually proven in science to be the best sun protection they actually have ones that you could put on externally i don't do that and then of course all the deep colored pigmented fruits and vegetables will have you ca cause you to have sun protection from the inside out maybe that's why well, I look a little bit think about uh, you it. know it's a hundred something degrees and these <laughs> yeah. things are so delicate and fragile and and they're they're fine so it's the chlorophyll and the minerals and things yeah I mean the plants the are little chemical factories that make their own chemicals that prevent them burning from the Sun yeah from and wilting so if you eat this so stuff, when you eat this stuff yeah, yeah. you're gonna take on that sun protection that exactly. the plant had yeah yeah and I, the problem I is people stuff on my don't eat enough plants and the other thing i'll do is you know i have a hat if i'm getting too much sun i'll put a hat on with a nice wide brim you want to put it on yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean this is one of my hats i had more because this is not a super hot day or super sunny day you know just a, i mean i think this is actually a girl's hat <laughs> i don't really care because for me it's all about functionality like this has a nice brim so i'm like not i'm gonna get sun not on my face i might still be working with my shirt off in the garden so i'll get like sun on my body and then at a certain point my body will tell me john you've had enough sun put your shirt back on yeah and yeah. then i'll just cover up with clothing when yeah. i've gotten enough sun but we need to get a proper amount of sun to make vitamin d because that's another nutrient that may be deficient in yeah. raw food diets right yeah, yeah. and if you don't have all your different nutrients Nutrients, then you're not gonna you know be a, a, a good model of health I love the or sun. be healthy I love the Sun I haven't even getting enough of it lately because of all the people I got to deal with on the internet <laughs> and I bring my computer outside but I can't read it it's too bright <laughs> but anyway uh, yeah that's great this is I mean I love it here I, I could just hang out here for I could sleep here at night you should have a <laughs> hammock back here it's, it's, it's so relaxing here by the way, guys, I, I had to fit in with John's look here. I'm, I'm to do an interview for John. I had to wear the shirt, so <laughs> I, I just, I just, I don't know. I like John. I like the way he lives, the way he dresses. Oh, thanks. His attitude. He's cool. I like him, and uh, he's a good example of health. For I mean, somebody is rare. People that actually live this way. Everybody says, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go to their kitchen and you look in their fridge and their cupboards, it's like, yeah, right. But you you live it, and that's why I'm proud of you for that. Well, I try to do the best I can, thank you so much. Sure. Oh, one more tip I forgot. Actually, the only thing I put on my skin, because like, I don't have any like special like high-priced you know, things, but I use this stuff, jojoba oil. 
So I after I buff out in the morning, then I put my jojoba oil on. You got the whole routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like a girl, but I'm I'm really low maintenance. <laughs> Just put the stuff away in the kitchen. All right. So anyways, I use jojoba oil because it's actually the most like our skin sebum. Uh, you know, because I generally have a dry skin condition. If you ever see me in a video, my hair always looks like wet or oily or greasy. It's because I put jojoba oil in my hair too to kind of keep it as a gel. So like. Fine, people could say, your, why is your hair always greasy? What kind of got jojoba oil on my skin <laughs> and my hair, guys? Kind of keeps my hair in place from blowing in the wind. But yeah, like uh, this, is, this is the most important thing for my dry skin condition. Of course, you have oily skin, you probably wouldn't want to use this. But this, this is, oh, and the other thing, when I'm putting this on every day, what I don't realize, I'm just putting it on for the oil. There's also antioxidants in the oil. So now I'm just directly, besides getting antioxidants internally, because right, right, right. that's the most important, I'm putting on externally, you know, which is also going to act as a small amount of sun protection, but also feed my skin from the outside. And well, speaking of hair and teeth, which you have still. <laughs> yeah, unlike, all my original teeth. Unlike a lot of fruitarians which seem to be losing their hair and teeth and getting all wrinkly and and I guess they're also losing their positive attitudes they're all like so ugh, yeah like aggressive or mm -hmm. anyway um, so would you say your hair and teeth and everything I mean obviously you, it, it's the minerals and the, the goods from the plants are keeping that going too. Yeah, right? so I mean my hair or, is super or, important, you know, I mean or, it's or, or I have a nice head of hair, never died, you know. Or would you say that that's, people can say, well that's hereditary, it's his genetic background. I mean my, my brother who's younger has more gray hairs than I do. Stress. I mean, well right? stress and yeah. I mean gray hairs is also mineral deficiencies yeah, right, they say. Right. So I try to eat r really high mineral rich foods, you know, on a daily basis. I try to always add some kind of seaweed powders or of seaweed course my right. greens yeah. for my garden, super mineral rich, hopefully they're absorbing everything that I'm putting in there. I also foil or feed them. These pea shoots are great. Oh, thanks, man. And then uh, the other thing that's important, you know, for the teeth. So the teeth, mineralization is super important aside from, you know, proper taking care of your teeth because there was a period of time when I eat more fruit and I'm like, oh, animals don't brush their teeth. I'm not going to brush my teeth either. That's a really bad mistake. Don't make that mistake. Please take care of your teeth. I floss every day once or sometimes even twice. Twice would be better. After every meal, if you're getting st things stuck in your teeth, that's the bacteria causes the decay. Um, you know, sugars can feed it. Um, and also brush your teeth appropriately, you know, wait after at least a half hour or an hour, better right, yet, right. after a meal, but minimally rinse out with some water, or I like to rinse out with them with the green You don't do a lot of sugar, so that's... Well, I mean, I eat fruit, you know, so I eat some fruit, I eat some dried fruit here and there. Um, so, and then the other thing is I have special, like, I have a, I mean, we could have a whole episode, which I will, I'm meaning to have one of these days, like I have a hair, like a skin product thing, I have a whole routine for my teeth, right? <laughs> so real quick. You know, I have a special toothbrush that makes titanium oxide that's supposed to kill bacteria in your mouth from Japan. It has a solar panel in there. I have actually this special toothpaste from Japan that remineralizes your teeth should you have sensitivity. This stuff really works to try to try to remineralize your teeth from the outside in, even though that should mostly come from the inside out. And uh, you know, brushing with those things, doing those things, flossing, and having a you uh, have an ultraviolet toothbrush sterilizer to kill the bacteria on the toothbrush after I'm done washing it or using it. I mean, you just put it out in the sun. That's all. You you could, yeah, you could totally do that too. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that's how I keep my teeth in good shape. I'm proud of you, and I'll I'll keep uh, visiting every now and then, <laughs> sharing you with the world, put you out there. Well, thanks, John. It's been oh, yeah, a pleasure. Thanks, it's it's been fun. a pleasure. I hope you inspire. I'm sure you will. Lots of people, and and back up this whole plant thing that people, I can't believe people believe plants aren't that good like that like you can live without plants like you yeah, just eat meat and bread and you're okay well you you could but you're not gonna yeah. be you could be yeah. okay for a little t while but for the long run it's yeah. really gonna it's cause gonna some massive devastation road, yeah. and people aren't aware of this yeah well thanks john good example yeah thank stay you tuned and s subscribe to his channel to mine and watch the good stuff because that's the stuff that will keep you in uh living a long healthy happy life and not fading away and decaying the last 40 years of your life keep the quality it's not how long you live it's the quality of your life so that's what i'm here to do and john's here to do and uh hopefully inspire you and prove to you that it does work so stay tuned and see you in the next one